Today I want to look at some practical steps and examples that we can fight fear. A few years ago I was living in outside of west of Austin in, in a relatively new neighborhood and it didn't have any street lights. Well, at one evening I decided to go on a walk and it was by myself. And it was later in the evening before summertime, so it was still late, but it was the sun was still out. Well, I didn't get far and eventually the sun went down and, and there was no moon that night and I guess the clouds were covered, so I mean it got pitch black. I remember just barely able to see my hands and kind of put one foot in front of the other as I was as I was walking the road back to my house. As I'm walking in this blackness, unable to see more than a few feet in front of me, I hear a woof that scent shivers through me. And after I hear this woof, I hear another big old bark and I hear this by the size of the bark, a big old dog had noticed me, seen me. I didn't see him, but boy, I heard the bark, and I hear a, I, he's growling, barking, and I hear him running. I hear his paws hitting the grass, the ground. I hear him running at me. Well, I'm standing there. I don't know whether to to run. I don't know whether to to fall to the ground and cover my head. If I run, I'm gonna run smack into a tree. Fear gripped me. In that split second, I thought, oh no, I'm going to get eaten by this big old dog. And so, dog, so I'm standing there, just, it all happens, you know, in the fraction of a second. And just as about, I don't, I mean, I, I'm parallel, I don't know what to do. I hear a, a chain link fence rattle, not probably more than six feet from me. And that dog was behind that chain link fence. I couldn't see the chain link fence. And as moment I heard the chain link fence and, and then he continued to bark, I, I realized that he was in someone's yard. But in that moment, that fear that gripped me paralyzed me. I had no way to respond that I felt good about. And I want to talk today in a few moments that we have here together on how, how do we combat fear? Because there, there are different kinds of fears that we have and I want to kind of look at some of those but before I begin I want to turn to the scriptures and it says in in 2nd Timothy chapter 1 7 it says for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind first of all we're not going to be talking about the fear of the Lord see that's that's a good kind of fear we could spend all evening talking about what it means to have the fear of the Lord. The Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. Fools despise correction. That's a wonderful kind of fear. Do not confuse that kind of fear with the, with the kind of fear we want to talk about today. Then there's the kind of fear that I was talking about with my dog story, at least how it started out. And that is there is a certain type of natural fear in that, that grips us, but yet it shouldn't grip us to where it freezes us. A, a natural fear or a fear response in this situation as I was standing there hearing that dog barking my heart rate started going which increased blood flow which increases oxygen my my heart my breath rate increases uh, my endorphins were sending through me I it was the nat, the body's natural response to ramp me up or to prepare me to be at my best physically mentally to to handle whatever threat I was about to do or to get into but there comes a point when ramping up and getting ready to handle that threat where it goes to the next level where instead of preparing you and ramping you up to handle to grasp to take the challenge kind of the fear the flight or fight response that it takes it too far where then you're when you freeze you're frozen you lock up it could be taking a test and your go, mind goes blank, you know it's back in there somewhere and you can't remember it. It may be when you are in a tough situation, it's public speaking, and you get up there and you freeze, you don't know what to say, you're, you're around a person or, you know, social interaction, fear, things like that, and it freezes rather than that nervousness and, you know, there's a certain level of fear that kind of gets us ready. You know, they, the great public speakers say that they always have, you know, usually always have the little butterflies. And, and, and that is, they say that's good because it helps keep them on their edge. It helps them keep them at their best. But what happens when the fear's in our lives? 
rather than ramping us up, that we're able to manage that fear where it takes us to a place where we, we a call to action and we're ready and prepared for it. It does just the opposite. It freezes us. It binds us. And the Apostle Paul here is talking about not just any kind of fear. He specifically says, it, he calls it a, a spirit of fear. And a spirit of fear is very different from a natural fear. Now, fear ultimately is a definition that I, that I found is it's the sensation or the feeling and thoughts that you are in danger that something is bad to happen. Well, we, we know that, but specifically here, fear is an emotion. It's a, it starts as a, as a feeling based upon some thoughts, based upon what you perceive as happening, whether it's real or imaginary. If you think it's, if you think it's happening and it's a fearful situation, your body is gonna respond to it. We dream at night. Many, you've ever woken up from a bad dream, from a nightmare, and what's happening? You're, you're ramped up, you're, you know, you're, you're afraid, your body, you're, you know, the sweats, and, and you may be trembling, and you wake up and you're still afraid. Your, your mind in the dream did not, could not distinguish between the reality and a dream. So it was all to you, it was real. So whether it's a, a real threat or an imaginary one, it doesn't matter. That is the response to fear. But there is a, a fear that leads to, the Apostle Paul calls it, he says, a spirit of fear. And in this spirit of fear, it leads to blind, where it blinds you, or it freezes and paralyzes you in that moment. And ultimately, it is a, it can, rather than you controlling it, it controls you. And the end result is fear can destroy. Fear can destroy relationships marriages fear can destroy it can it can break down and destroy every area of a person's life what happens when that fear takes root that spirit of fear takes root what are the different areas and places that it can take root well some of the most common fears that people have is in our finances uh, a marriage children our job is a place of stress. Fear and stress, that that's all means the same thing. Stress is just prolonged fear over time. Uh, fear of our health and being in good health. Fear of, you know, something is, I say simple, but something is, you know, as being embarrassed or public speaking or our fear of getting hurt. There are so many that have like the fear, a phobia of needles, you know, and that I, it's just, it's a fear that takes them. The fear of, again, social interactions are ultimately the fear of death God doesn't want us to be controlled by any fear so he has given us spiritual weapons for us to combat the various fears that we may come up against and involved in in our lives and these weapons that we have to fight fear are what the Apostle Paul describes and mentions it really doesn't describe him, but I want to go into some more detail and describe some of these weapons that he gives us. He says, he is not get, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Spiritual power is a weapon that God has given us to use against fear. Spiritual love is a weapon spiritual self-control sound mind spiritual now this word spiritual here it, there are some synonyms some words spiritual can very mean mean also the same as supernatural we're not talking about natural thing natural love here we're not talking about natural power what you can do with your own bicep what you can do with your own two hands we're not talking about natural power we're talking about a spiritual power we're not talking about a natural love either there is a certain amount of love that a man or an individual person can have we're taking we're not talking about a natural love we're talking about a a spiritual love a supernatural love a a heavenly love a love that comes from the from a, up above comes from heaven comes from the Lord a godly love I want to talk about that supernatural love I want to talk about that supernatural power that the Apostle Paul says that we have specifically specifically to come against the fears that we have because we've all been there where that fear has gripped and controlled and we've been we have seemed to be helpless at the mercy of that situation 
where that fear came up and we were paralyzed, unable to respond, unable to move. It may be in a moment, but it may be over things in life in general, big situations where we're just, we're just, we're, we're, we seem helpless and unable to do anything about it. That's the spirit of fear. 